G'day. I used the boom the other day for a bit of video work. That was on the uh, differential indexing video. And I'm reasonably happy with it, but it seemed to be not as stiff as, a, as I would have liked it to be. So what I've done today is I've converted what is basically a flat truss into a space frame. I've put some braces on there and um, that has stiffened it up oh, quite a bit. My normal way of checking angles on, on uh, things is with this. This is a, just a cheap inclinometer, reads to a degree. Uh, it's got a magnet on one side and a V-block on the other, and that's usually good enough for what I'm doing. In this particular case, though, I can't use this because um, the aluminium tube, I've got no way of, of, of clamping to that, and of course aluminium is non-magnetic. So I do have something else which is worth having a look at uh, to do this sort of stuff. This is a uh, regular uh, inclinometer. It's a Swiss bit of kit, and uh, it was uh, first. I was first made aware of this by my friend Bob over in Perth, and it's 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 very nice. Um, this has been a, a, a sort of a I won't say bodged together a salvaged kit that I, I got. I got the the dial, and I had to make up the base. But it's got two things. It's got a magnet that it sits on there, and there's a little swivel on that, and you can also swivel this around here and around there, so you can get all sorts of adjustability. But the other thing I've got, which is really good in this particular occasion, is this. This is a, a, a clamp arrangement, but the clever thing about this is that. That will, that will clamp on the back, that's not a problem. But this bit here goes on to a, a, a round thing, and I'll just randomly select a round thing here, like that. But then you use this screw here to act as a clamp, right? So that actually tightens that up and clamps quite firmly onto that bit of round stock. That's a really nice little detail and certainly helps with, with getting these things uh, in the right spot. So I'm going to be using this to uh, just show what the angle is. Uh, the, the, the divisions on there are pretty slight, so I don't know whether we're going to pick terribly much up, but we'll just have to see. This is the boom uh, with the inclinometer attached, with the, the second part folded. Now you can see there that we're maybe a, a degree or two off 90. It's not, uh, it's not all that uh, bad. It's all straightened up. But if I open the boom up, okay, so the boom is, is now out with, a, with nothing on it and it's increased oh, probably to about 85 degrees. If I then put a weight on that, to sort of approximate the weight of the camera. It goes down to about 83 or so. Now, what's worse is that you can see, not necessarily from the needle, but from the frame, that it's oscillating. So I need to do something to fix that. Here I've put a reflective dot and I can use my handheld taco to just see what that's doing. So if I pull that up and down, I'm getting roughly about 100 hertz out of that. Now, one of the problems with a slow frequency, at least to my bare of simple brain way of looking at these things, is that if this thing, do, if, if, the, if the motion decays a little bit every, every uh, cycle, the slower that goes, the longer it's going to take to decay. So what I'd really like is for that to be a lot stiffer, that frequency to be a lot higher, so that uh, it will just maybe wobble once or twice and then stop. Adding this piece is actually a little bit tricky because the way the, the frame is, uh, it's going to intersect, and here's a piece of tube to pretend to be the frame, it's got to go in like that at around about 10 degrees. So a little bit tricky, but what I discovered is you can actually work out what that cut needs to look like graphically. So if you don't fancy fiddling around with CAD models and all that sort of thing, um, this, is, this is one way to do it. It's not perfect because there's a material thickness in there which, which mucks things up, but I'll show you what I've done. To work out how to do this, I put a whole bunch of circles here which represents the tube that's 
is, is staying whole and then the this lot of circles is the tube intersecting and what has to happen is that at this point here which I, I measured off you know held the tube up and sort of had a bit of a squint and measured uh, that has to be a tube diameter 25 and down here it has to be nothing and so what I did was I, I drew a circle drew a line between the two everything and nothing and then drew more circles with my my circle template worked out what the distance across there was, marked that on the tube, and then cut that out. And so that's that's basically what that shape is. I knew that here it had to be nothing, and I knew here it had to be a whole tube, and so it was a matter of, you know, taking the measurements from here, putting marks on, measuring across, and that gave me my basic shape. I've had to just bring that out a little bit to allow for material thickness, but I'll clamp that on and I can weld that and I've got a pretty fair chance of that being um, a nice intersection. The other end is just going to meet up with a bit of square tubing and because that's at 90 degrees um, that's just a, a straight uh, bevel so just with the angle grinder for that one. This is the, well I'm hoping it's the first stage of boom rectification. Um, it might have to be a little bit more but We'll see how we go with this one. I've put another member in here. I've got a couple of things to note about that. One is that uh, I've positioned it the, the, the hinge here. Now, I could have put it on the top, but then between the hinge point, which is a, a solid anchor, and the top of the frame here, th there could be some flex. So I'm better off going to, to the hinge or somewhere near the hinge. So that's all good. I've put some diagonals in here. Um, partly aesthetic just to match whatever whatever else is happening but the other thing is that with a long slender thing like this you get some buckling okay and it may not be much but by putting these in here I've stiffened things up now because of the the very slight angle what I've had to do is I've drilled a, a 19 hole this is a 16 tube so I've got a little bit of leeway but then I had to put a bit of rod stock in there and bend that down to get a bit of an indentation there uh, and it's, it's also lifted that a little bit so I could get these tubes in and I've also had to do this on this tube here but what that should mean is that once that's welded up that'll be a really strong solid um, assembly and as well as having resistance to bending this way which the original truss did this should also help me with twist now I'm going to do this put it up see how it all goes if that doesn't work uh, as well as I would like it to then I may have to come along with a brace from here to here that's going to complicate things because that's the plane that the tube sits in so I'm going to have to be offset from that so I'm hoping that won't be necessary but I will this up we'll put it back to the way it was put the inclinometer on and see what the, the natural frequency is. My aluminium welding is mainly uh, self-taught or self-learning as I like to say because I still am and uh, typically I can produce something like that which I think is quite reasonable for what I want to do. So I was a bit surprised when I got something like this. The setup was pretty much the same but it's it's lumpy it hasn't it hasn't wetted things all that well. Uh, the material is reasonably clean it's it's you know been brushed and all that sort of stuff and a bit of bit of acetone splashed around the place and normally when I get that it's because I haven't got enough heat in there however uh, I also noticed that if you, I don't know whether you, how well you can see that but that electrode is significantly dis discolored there right and so that suggests to me a lack of gas now, I also know I was at the, the at the bottom of the um, uh, the cylinder's worth of gas, uh, it, the, the, the needle was just off the pin, so I've tried you know, newly sharpened electrode, I've tried a different filler rod in case I picked up the wrong filler rod, still get this, so it's, it's about the, uh, the gas I think, so I'm going to try in a moment with, the, with a new cylinder of gas and uh, hopefully that'll clean up, I'll have, to, I'll have to grind that off or clean that up or something like that, um, but it's one of those things that sometimes some of the most important lessons you get are from from failures and you've got to work out how to how to look at these things and work out well what is wrong uh, so in this case I would suggest yeah, lack of gas 
I'm having one of those days where I can't will to save my life. I do those occasionally, so I'm not going to show you the, the rest of my world. They're adequate, but barely. However, ch uh, changing the gas over didn't quite fix the problem. It helped. But I then looked at the, the torch. Now, I run a gas lens in this thing, and if you look at this, it's pretty much clogged. It's, it's full of spatter. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that... You know, where that spatter comes from. Uh, this, is, this, this lens has been in use for a oh, year or two, but uh, I swapped it out with a, with a spare and things improved dramatically. So I guess that's a, another lesson there is that, you know, always carry a spare uh, for, for bits of kit like this. I'll have to order another one. But uh, yes, if, if your electro looks dark uh, and the worlds are looking a bit sooty, then it's gas flow and it could be as simple as simple as you know over time the gas lens is filled up with 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 crud here's the frame with the added stiffener and to me that looks like the the inclinometer is back something similar to what it was um, with the with the frame folded in uh, we'll just try that here it is with the frame folded back in and it might have moved a degree uh, but you know, it's, it's pretty much um, solid now. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll bother with a piece under here, but uh, we'll, we'll see how all that works. I was going to stop at just with the, the, the top bar on here, but when I checked the frequency, it had gone up to about 200 hertz. Um, that's better than it was because it was around about the 100 hertz mark but I thought well let's see what else we can do so here it is with a with a brace on the on the bottom uh, and it's just a straight brace going back to the corner there and that looks like it's around about two degrees to my eyes so uh, it's stiffened it up a little bit more but I'll put the uh, the, the the taco on the other end and see what the uh, the frequency is but there we go, that's the stiffening up of uh, my camera boom. The resonant frequency started around about 100 hertz. Uh, putting the top member on took it up to around about the 200 mark. Putting the bottom member on then took it up to around about the 230, 240 mark. So uh, quite a reasonable increase in stiffness. Uh, still shakes a little bit more than I'd like it to, so I need to, to have another think about that. I may also have to look at the hinge because the hinge is a little bit uh, sloppy and so that's tending to make it droop and it may also be adding a little bit to the to the bounce so I need to check on that uh, but uh, this this video yeah it, I'd, I'd claim this as a success so thanks for watching see you for the next one